that would be the full moon above Sydney, Australia. And we're going to have a look at the Trezor Bitcoin hardware wallet. Let's check this device out and learn. I actually purchased two Trezor uh, hardware Bitcoin wallets. I purchased them each uh, for $119 US, although I paid in Bitcoin at buytrezor.com. The wallets took about two weeks after I paid to arrive here from the Czech Republic to Sydney, Australia. By the packaging here you can see that it has the plastic coating, it also has the holographic seal there and the, uh, the package is actually kind of glued up so to open it takes a bit of effort and you can really see if you've been in the, uh, if someone's been into that package or not. So you have the directions here. I purchased some extra cabling because this cable here is good for a laptop but I have the desktop uh, machine here, computer, so I've bought that. This is the device and you can see that it's quite small and dainty and this here is the seed booklet. Of course you could use any paper or something else but um, so this is for the record, the recording of your seed which is very important. Before we start let's note that this device does not store bitcoins. It allows us access to our bitcoins that are on the blockchain that is distributed amongst computers around planet earth. So uh, this device does not store bitcoins. First up plug the device into your computer and go to mytrezor.com. At mytrezor.com the first graphic you will see is get started and basically you want to download the plugin. Trezor term this the bridge and indeed it is a bridge between your web browser and the actual Trezor hardware Bitcoin wallet device so that they can kind of talk with one another if you will. Now you could be using another web browser like uh, Firefox etc. So and you can choose your operating system right here of course. One thing to note is that you may need to update your operating system. I had to do this. I had Macintosh's OS X 10.7.5 and I had to update that to a newer edition. Indeed you may need to do the same with your web browser also if it is a few years old. Another thing to note is that other wallets can use the Trezor device also, so they would have their own plugins, such as a plugin for the Electrum wallet or Green address as well with their Greenbits wallet, etc. But anyway, for now, we're going to use the Trezor web wallet and we're going to download the plugin. The next step is to locate the Trezor plugin, which doesn't take long to download, maybe a minute or so, and click on it, and you will find a window like this, and you need to kind of grab the plugin and put it into your plugins folder. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've actually taped the Trezor device to the screen of the computer. We return now to the mytrezor.com web page and we can see that the Trezor device is plugged in. You may need to refresh the page and you should get a graphic, graphic like this or similar to this. Note over here that you can uh, recover the seed so you can make recoveries. The main thing with these devices is that you have the seed but anyway before we do that we can uh, label the device here so I'll do that right now and we label the device and I'll now we'll just step back a bit and continue and as you can see two things happen there so we've got the numbers and the device uh, and this is on the computer here on the website so we can now put in the pin number and we use the configuration of here 
So I'm going to put in a, a simple pin number. So we'll do say one, two, three, four. So going off there, I'm going to go one and then two, three, and then four so that it matches, the configuration matches. And here we can see fine, it tells me that those are fine. So I'll now push enter, click enter. Now you can see that we're going to do it again to confirm. And on here, the configuration on the device, the configuration of the numbers has changed the position. So this, for keyloggers and so forth, people who are hacking your computer, they can't see onto the Trezor device. So now we're going to put that in again. So we'll find one, one, two, three, and four and confirm. Now we have a different graphic here and this is the seed and uh, we have the graphic here also so and we have a, a word on here. Now the recovery seed is the most important part and with the device we are keeping the seed off the computer so it's on the device so it's not kind of, it, it's not being looked at by uh, hackers for example into your computer so what we're going to do now is take note of the seed now you could write the seed in this booklet here i'm not going to write this particular seed in the booklet uh, i'm just going to put it down on some separate paper so the first word is garlic and i'll write garlic down garlic and then for the next word I I push uh, next so that's the and then we get the second word and I'll write that in also which is mirror and you need the right order so what we'll do is keep going through this process next and as you can see here, it says write down the third word of your recovery seed. So we'll write down this word here, which is enable. Enable. And so on. Okay, I've now written down the key. This is the private key to my Bitcoin wallet. So what it's going to ask me to do now is to double check this and it's something you should take seriously. You need to be sure uh, that your private key is how it is supposed to be. So we now go back to uh, the first word and we're just going to go through and double check. So we can do this and then you just keep going through like so checking that the words are correct go right through once that's done we uh, get to this stage here and it's now loading up the Trezor wallet loading up your account so here's the Trezor wallet and you can see that uh, congratulations your wallet is now ready to use and we can go here and we have a QR code here that we can scan to uh, put this is the public address so we can use this people can use this to send uh, bitcoins to this wallet and here we have a send area so we can put someone's address in here and details also and then we will sign out and we will indeed need to use the device to sign transactions out over here we can create 
more accounts also uh, but we need to put sort of more bitcoins in to create more accounts so you need bitcoins in account one first but notably uh, each of these accounts would have its own uh, kind of private key built off the seed if you will it's called a deterministic wallet system so that's quite interesting also so you can have multiple accounts down here with a kind of different private key if you will although it's all accessible uh, via the key that we have and that key is this series of words here now you should have two lots of these of this series of words it should all be correct and I would suggest that you have it hidden in at least two places where it's completely safe uh, because this is the key to your bitcoins as I said the bitcoins are not kept on the Trezor wallet the your bitcoins are not on this hardware device as strange as that may seem they're uh, part of the blockchain uh, as i've mentioned before and your access to them is actually this this series of words here so keep them in a couple of places and uh, also keep your pin and basically don't lose this series of words if you do you lose your bitcoins if you lose this it doesn't matter and if someone tries to use it and they get the pin wrong they have to keep trying and each time it slows down as they try to use the pin uh, it actually doubles each time so uh, if this device goes missing it doesn't matter but if someone gets their hands on this information your bitcoins will be gone they will take them so what I'll do right now is I'll send some Bitcoin to this address here which you have the public address so you have the string of numbers here and this is the public address right here. These are the ones that you can show other people and they can send Bitcoins uh, to this address. You can even bring more. I can kind of change the address if you will. Uh, here is another address now that will um, that I can use for people to send bitcoins but we'll use this one here you'll notice the QR code changes so these two here correspond basically it's the same information uh, if I press that one there it will be the same information so going back here and what I'm going to do is scan that address so this is my bitcoin wallet on my phone and I'm just scanning that uh, QR code there and I'm now going to send some Bitcoin so we'll just go into here and I'll put in uh, as far as the Bitcoin goes say point, uh, zero, zero, 0.004 uh, Bitcoin and OK that you can see the miners fee there of 4 cents Australian and I'll push send and that is now broadcasting and you can see up here already that uh, some, the, the screen flashed sort of kind of straight away in a way and you can see over here that in the account we have the uh, 0 0.004 Bitcoin there so that's received to that address. I'll leave it at that uh, to finish up I like the Trezor device uh, it's certainly assuring to not have to use the keyboard to type uh, on your computer thus uh, hackers and keyloggers can't get to uh, your affairs your Bitcoin affairs that way so to speak um, protect that seed that's the main thing and I'll leave it at that bye for now